Hello, welcome back to the channel where today I am driving a Ferrari Portofino M, M for modificato, which means modified, which is not surprising because it's a facelifted version of the Portofino. Ferrari's kind of entry level car, if you like, it's most chilled, most laid back car. There are visual changes to the exterior, the face is a bit more dynamic and there is also, you may notice, there was a strake here before, but it now extends to the front of the front wheel as well to make it look even more racy and sporty and more Roma-esque in a way. There is an engine at the front and because it has to meet the latest emissions regulations that now gets gasoline particulate filters, GPFs, one each side of the engine and the exhausts. I'm coming back to the visuals in a minute, there is a reason for this. The exhausts then follow the torque tube all the way down to where the gearbox is at the back. It's now an eight speed twin clutch gearbox rather than a seven speed. Fitting GPF reduces an engine's power. So Ferrari has taken steps to make it more than that by doing some other work to the engine. What it does mean though, as well as reducing power, it muffles the noise, which means there are no silencers under the back like there used to be. So in terms of design changes at the back, there's a new diffuser array and everything else which goes further up into the car and there is now a lot more air and a lot more diffusery sculpty shape where there used to be silences. So that's quite cool. I mentioned there's more power. That is up by 20 horsepower to 612 brake horsepower, which is quite a lot for an entry-level car, is it not? We have videos of entry-level and other Ferraris and other manufacturers too available on Autocars YouTube, so why not subscribe? But before we go for a drive in the Portofino M, let's check out the interior. So inside, the Portofino's architecture has been revised slightly, but not entirely. It's still a simple but sculpted interior. I absolutely love these sort of turbine-like air vents. I think they're really cool. The material finish is really nice. It doesn't have that sort of deep, thick, three-inch thick feeling of wood and leather that something like a Bentley Continental GT has. It feels sort of lighter than that. You know, if you open the, the glove box and things, it, 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 it it clacks with a more lightweight clack. There is a new touchscreen um, in the middle, which gives me control of most things. There is also a little touchscreen over here for the passenger, which uh, allows them to control, say, the media and uh, find navigational points of interest and stuff like that. What the passenger can't do is control any of the drive modes, because that's reserved, obviously, for the person who is sitting here. And you control the drive modes by the little manatee note, which is just such a lovely, high quality feeling thing which gets five positions on its dial for the first time in a in a portofino rather than four there is a new setting called race that brings with it a new piece of uh, electronic stability control software called ferrari dynamic enhancer which they say makes it easier to control the car on the limit it doesn't slap you down like the esc would in some of the sterner modes but it doesn't let you just fall off the road as it would do if you were in esc off it sounds to me a lot like side slip control, which they have on the racier Ferraris, but with a slightly less heroic name. I don't think today, given the conditions, that we will be um, experiencing the full gamut of race or ESC off, but let's go for a drive and see what this car is like in terrible conditions. Okay, so now we are on the move in the Portofino and you may be able to see from frantic windscreen wipers and the rain outside the windscreen that we are not on some Italian vista lakeside in the sunshine but on a very narrow twisty windy road in mega rubbish conditions in the UK so if this car impresses here I think you can be fairly sure it will impress anywhere and I come at the Portofino M with very little experience of the previous non M car but I did drive quite recently the new Roma coupe which is also front engine rear wheel drive with a V8 up the front and in its market it feels right up the fast end of things because that's a GT car and it's right at the sharp end of the scale there is a video elsewhere on this channel of the Roma against an Aston DB11 and a Bentley Continental and I commend it to you if you like subscribe give us an up thumb all that sort of thing turn on the little bell notifications you'd never miss one of our Ferrari videos or any other videos that we bring you so I come to this Portofino with no experience of the previous one, but quite a lot of experience in the Roma. So what I'm intrigued by is how much character these two cars 
share? I mean, is it like 911 Coupe and Convertible? Is it like Porsche Cayman and, and Boxster? Or do they feel very different? And first impressions are, in some ways, they're quite similar. The steering is really sharp, really quick. As soon as you turn, it turns. The car is, is, is pointing this way and that. On bad roads, there's a little bit of tram lining on, on poor surfaces, just as you get into a truck groove or something like that. You know, the steering tugs around. But the ride is good. The ride is composed and flat. So even though it's, it's quick to change direction, and there is a little tram lining, on good roads and on the power, it's actually really controllable. And even though I'm sitting on the left-hand side of the car on a tight road with a really responsive car around me, it's actually quite easy to place. Visibility is pretty good. You can see the little sort of tops of the wings, which helps place this car sort of, you know, to the edge of the, from the edge to the middle as you want. It does not feel an intimidating car, despite the fact that it's light of steering, fast of response, and it has 612 horsepower, which comes from turbos, and it's rear wheel drive, and the conditions are rubbish. The driving position is good. The seats are all right, but a bit like the, a bit like the Romas, they're not the most supportive things in the world, even though you can boost up the side bolsters and sort of put the lumbar support back to try and give them a bit more support, but they're never the most cosseting things in the world, but they're, but they're, but they're fine. The rest of the driving position is, is great. And unlike the Roma, the fact that there are physical buttons here and a nice big analog rev counter in the middle, I kind of prefer that. And I certainly don't hit any buttons accidentally when I'm turning, turning this sort of overburdened small wheel. And I like the fact the gear shift paddles stay exactly where they are. Some manufacturers have a different attitude to this. You get in some cars and they turn with the wheel. But when you've got half a turn of lock on and you want to change up or down a gear, I find it quite nice to have the gear shift paddles exactly where you left them. In a race car, I get it because your hands stay exactly where they are on the wheel and you've got the paddles there at all the time. But in a road car, it makes sense to me to have them on the column rather than the wheel. The roof goes down. I am not going to put it down right now but you can put it down at up to 30 miles an hour. It does it reasonably quickly. And with the roof up, there's, there's no, you get no inkling that this is a, a convertible car. You get in some roadsters and you can sort of feel the body flex a bit like, you know, you take the top off of a shoebox, the whole thing becomes suddenly more, more flexible. You get no idea with the roof up in here that it's a, that it's a roadster. It feels really rigid, really strong, even when you go over really sort of bad lumps and bumps, there's no shimmy in the mirror to suggest that there's any flex in the body. It feels a really solidly assembled, responsive, agile car. And that is kind of where, where it is. It's got a nice balance to it. It turns really well. It's a, it's a, it's a relatively light car for a car of its, of its size. The gearbox is at the at the back, which helps the weight distribution be fairly even. So it turns nicely, it steers nicely, it never builds up any, any weight, but it just about avoids being too hyper-responsive. So it kind of depends what you're looking for from your roadster. And on the scale of dynamism through to comfort and relaxation, I think this is at the sharp end of the scale and things like the Bentley Continental GT and the Mercedes SL are at the more relaxed cosseting end of things. And what I think is, is interesting is that these days the Porsche 911 convertible is also moving towards that end of the, of the comfort scale. Dynamically very capable though it is, this feels right at the sharp, responsive, pointy end of things. Gearbox is really quick. The brake pedal feel has been sharpened and made more responsive. So if you want a comfy, easy-going cruise around an Italian lakeside at 30 miles an hour GT car. Those cars are no worse or no better. They are just more suited to that kind of thing. If you want a car that is absolutely at the sharp end of the dynamic scale in its segment, I think this is probably the place to be. The Portofino M's UK on the road price is £175,360. You can expect to pay quite a lot more than that 
by the time you have put some options on. And there is elsewhere on this channel a full review of the Ferrari Roma against its rivals, the Aston Martin DB11 AMR and Bentley Continental GT. And I commend them to you. You would not miss those or any other of Auto Cars video if you give us a subscription and maybe even turn on the bell notification. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you next time.